This is a film based on real events. A train full of flammable and explosive objects is speeding on the track. However, there is no driver on the train. Once the train encounters a curve that needs to slow down, it will overturn. This seriously threatens the safety of people and property in the nearby towns. Such a major safety accident. All because of the fat man's momentary carelessness. The fat man is the driver of this private railroad company. It was the day when a group of elementary school students was coming here to experience a safety workshop on the train. The dispatcher saw that a train was still on track 16. So he asked the fat man to move the train to the next free track. Because the 16th track has been arranged for students to experience the safety class. The fat man then impatiently came to the train cab, and his partner started checking the carriage behind him. Seeing that the airline was not connected properly, he wanted to ask Fatty to wait for a while, but Fatty thought it was no big deal, and it was too late to connect the train after moving it to the next track. The airline is to act as a break for the train. Even without a driver, the train could be stopped, but the train and a lot of brakes. His partner also did not take it seriously, so he changed the track and told the fat man to hurry up and start the train. He was in a hurry to get to his uneaten lunch, but soon after the train started, the fat man realized that his partner had just switched to the wrong track. Now he was heading to the 16th track that the students were going to use. Thinking that the train is towing a total of 39 cars, if you want to stop, you have to drive a distance of 20 cars. The partner told Fatty to stop and take some time to turn the train back, but Fatty thought this was a manageable problem. He first set the independent brakes and then switched to unmanned mode. Then he jumped off the train and came to the control point of switching tracks. However, the forward lever on the driver's seat automatically jumped down. When the fat man noticed it, the train slowly increased its speed. Before he had time to change tracks, the train was already heading to the 16th track. The fat man hurriedly ran toward the front of the train, but with a body of more than 200 pounds. It was a great effort for him to run. He managed to grab the handrail, but the train's speed was getting faster and faster. The fat man also stumbled and fell to the ground, seeing that something had happened. The fat man still did not notice the seriousness of the matter. He did not panic to the dispatch yard, and found the female supervisor Connie Tube to report the matter. Once she heard that the driver had left the train to change the track, this angry she immediately did not look good. So Connie told them to hurry up and take the maintenance car and go up to chase the train, to ensure the safety of the students on the same track. Connie asked the dispatcher to contact the tourist train in a hurry, and told the train driver to change lanes and drive to the siding immediately. She then contacted Inspector Ned. According to the train speed provided by Fatty, the train would pass workstation number 5 in 15 minutes. She told Ned to get to that station early so he could switch tracks and move the train off track 16. Ned saw the urgency of the situation and rushed to his destination. He waited for a long time at station 5. The accident train did not wait, but waited for the fat man and his partner. The two of them at this point still have an attitude of no one in sight, completely unaware that they have broken a great disaster, because the train has been like a wild horse. It is long past the number 5 workstation, now there was no chance to change lanes. Connie saw that things were getting worse and worse, so she told Fatty to catch up with the train and climb on the front to bring it under control. On the other hand, she asked Ned to keep an eye on the train. Good thing Connie let the tourist train drive to a sideline in advance, which avoided a major traffic accident. But that's just the beginning of the story. To bring the train under control, the fat man drove the maintenance car to rush to the front of the train. His partner tried to climb onto the train, but the two needed to work better together. The fat man's speed is either too fast or too slow. This curve is the only chance for the two men. Once they miss this opportunity there is no possibility of getting close to the train. He managed to grab the handrail, but the front was met with a warning light. The partner had no choice but to give up an only chance they had. Then they could only watch as the train drove away from, but then, someone else was in danger, while traveling in the opposite direction. Frank received a call from the dispatcher. He told Frank to go to the next siding to avoid the uncrewed train. The news put the two on board on edge for a moment. Such a shocking event was soon discovered by the media, who were now reporting the news of the runaway train. The fat man's momentary mistake made him the main character of the accident, and his supervisor was also very angry at the moment. Seeing that the matter had been in the news, she reported the issue to her superior, Calvin. He learned that the train was loaded with flammable and explosive toxic substances. In the event of a rollover in a densely populated town, 
This would be an unprecedented safety incident, so he asked Connie to control the train to pass through the parallel road first. But Connie wants Galvin to order the derailment of the train. It is better to have a train overturned in a deserted farmland than in a crowded residential area. However, Galvin did not agree with Connie's proposal. A train derailment would be a huge financial loss for the company. Right now, he thinks the train can still be saved, and airborne personnel can be sent to control it. But Galvin didn't know the train's actual speed at that moment. When passing a parallel road, the vehicle that was too late to drive away was directly knocked over. This also made the incident hit the news again. Galvin's top management held a meeting in a hurry. The final result was that if the train derailed, the company's stock market would not only fall by half but incur a direct financial loss of $100 million. The bosses behind the scenes also agreed with Galvin's plan and immediately sent airborne personnel to control the train. They carefully selected a former retired Special Forces employee to ride in the helicopter and sent a veteran driver with 26 years of train driving experience. He drove the locomotive into the main line from one side, thus reducing the speed of the runaway train. The old driver first controlled the locomotive to about 40 miles per hour. The out-of-control train soon caught up with him, when the speed was reduced to less than 40 miles per hour. The airborne personnel also successfully came to the head of the runaway train, but when the train hit the front of the low-speed train again, the airborne personnel lost their center of gravity, hit the glass, and passed out. The dispatch center changed tracks to get the train off the main line because the airborne operation failed. This also made the old driver at the front of the car usher in a huge crisis. At too fast a speed, the front end change of track would lead to the crisis of overturning. Before the old driver had time to react, he was buried in the fire. Seeing the old employee killed, Connie cursed at Galvin on the spot, and he could only suffer in silence. But then, someone else had to deal with death. Frank, a veteran driver was about to collide head-on with the runaway train because of a failed lane change, but there was a sideline on the way to the encounter. When the two trains were about to collide, Frank reduced the body's speed. This makes the side of Will very puzzled, but then he realized that Frank was an experienced driver. Once the car's speed is too high, the lane change will be rolled over. The old driver buried in the fire just now was a lesson from the past. Although the cargo box at the rear of the car was smashed by the train, but compared to the previous casualties, this is also the best ending. Careful, Frank found that the rear connector of the runaway train was open, so he made a bold decision. He unhooked the connection with the train container box. Start the front of the train towards the runaway train. Frank thought he could effectively reduce the car's speed by dragging the runaway train from the opposite direction. This will give him a chance to climb on the runaway train. But his actions were soon known to Galvin. Galvin had already had a taste of failure. Now he decides to force a derailment somewhere. Frank. On the other hand, refused to stop. He believed that this derailment had a high probability of failure. If the train failed to derail, it would overturn in the nearby town, because there is a 15 miles per hour speed limit curve. Once the accident occurs, the whole town will be ushered in the end of the disaster. Although Galvin has the power to make decisions, Connie greatly favors Frank's idea. This is when the train is coming towards the densely populated town. To prevent a major safety accident, police officers rush to evacuate many residents in the train's path. To bring the train under control, many police officers opened fire on the train's red safety box. But the safety box was too small, and the fuel tank was next to it. So the operation failed. Watching the train whizzing by, the Federal Railroad Administration officers wanted to force the train to derail. They installed dozens of derailers on the tracks and anxiously awaited the train's arrival. The train was moving at full speed and soon reached the derailment point. When the train passes the derailment point, the derailment device is directly crushed by the train due to the excessive speed of the body. Thought the train would overturn, but it did not even see signs of bumps. This makes Galvin also a face of bafflement. Luckily, Frank, the old driver, had the foresight. He refused Galvin's order to leave the track. At the moment, he was driving a train head that was catching up fast. There was no way to control the train. The unpromising Frank was also the last line of defense for the crowd. He intended to use the front of the train to connect to the rear of the train, and then use the brakes to slow down the runaway train. As the front end of the train approached the rear, Will came to the train's connection. This would be a very risky move. At nearly 80 miles per hour, 
Will would have been thrown off the train in the event of an accident. Due to the reverse direction of travel, the rear of the train body needs someone to direct. Frank can better grasp the real-time distance with the rear of the train. At the moment of hooking up the connection, the front of the train still crashed into the rear of the runaway train. This caused some grain to pour out from the rear of the train. A few moments later, Will realized the linkage was not properly connected. Frank increased the speed again, this time it was successfully connected, but the iron lock on the connector did not fall. This means that there is still a possibility that it will come off at any time. Will had no choice but to go to the connection, he kept trying to close the lock, but the speed of the two cars was completely different. When the connection was closed, his right foot was directly crushed. Will almost fell onto the track because of the pain. Luckily, he grabbed the handrail and was able to save his life. Now that the connection had been made, Frank started pulling down the handbrake, instantly bringing up many sparks. Only a few moments later, he found that the train's speed was still rising, so he alternated between using the brake and the full speed wheel. Soon, he got the effect of reducing the speed of the train. However, not long after, the speed was raised again. Because the runaway train was so heavy, the front end of the train was now being dragged along, but there was a 15 miles per hour speed limit curve coming up. Will remember a manual brake at the back of each car, because his right foot was injured. Frank had to let him stay in the cab, and told Will to control the brakes and forward momentum. He climbed into the train car and turned off the individual brakes on each vehicle. After all this, the train did slow down. See the speed of the car was reduced to about 20 mph, but the brakes on the front of the car is directly burst open. The train was about to enter the speed limit curve, and Will was at a loss. Frank told him to control the independent brakes as instructed. When the train entered the largest curve area, the train began to appear with the possibility of overturning. He told Will to pull the independent brakes, seeing that pulling down the brakes once was ineffective. He asked Will to release the brakes and repeat the operation. The train that was about to roll over was pulled back into position by this operation. After this difficult moment, the next road is much less risky. Frank originally wanted to go to the front of the train to control the brakes. Only halfway there, he was stopped by a huge gap. Will jumped on the pickup truck and then smoothly jumped on the train. The train was under control and gradually stopped. The movie is based on a true story that took place in 2001. As an employee about to be abandoned by the company in a life and death situation, Frank did not choose to stand by and do nothing. Instead, he marches toward danger. He is not trying to play a personal hero, because in this place of the train speed limit curve, there is a home where he has lived all his life. 